Good afternoon, sir. Um, my name is Elegant Chime. This is Political Update on LeagueBlast.com, the most updated news portal. And also, we are the proud owners of League Blast TV, the most updated online TV. Um, you do us the honor of introducing yourself because we use um, this platform for, for people who want to throw more light on policies. Thank you. My name is Neto Ike Ekwere Madam. I'm the senator representing Enugu West Senatorial District of Enugu State, and I'm the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Environment. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, a lot of people have been giving good testimonies um, about you as regards the foundation and all the good things that you have been doing through your foundation. Please tell us more about that. Well, the foundation is just um, a channel for me to give back to the system and society that uh, they did help me to get to where I am. And uh, we try as much as possible to support uh, children and uh, women. We did that for a number of years, but in 2004, we decided to formally register the foundation. So it's been registered since 2004. And what we do essentially is to empower the youths and then the uh, women. On the part of youths, what we do is uh, to give them scholarship and give them um, educational grants. We also conduct um, quiz competitions among uh, secondary school children and those uh, who um, excel we give them scholarship. We also tried as much as possible to uh, have uh, sports programs and then in those sports programs we um, also look at the winners and also give them scholarship as well. And um, on the part of women we try also to support them you know, in their trade, we help them, those of them that are farmers and those who are trading to help them with some small, small grants in order to uh, be able to cope you know, with their, uh, their businesses. And what the most importantly, what we do uh, with the women and some men as well, is to give them education. And the education we are looking at is the adult education that try to um, take them out of illiteracy, you know, and um, help them to, uh, you know, reconnect with the system. Those are men and women who could not go to school when they were young and the society had left them behind. So we needed to reconnect them with the society by teaching them how to read and write. And I'm happy to say that uh, we've achieved a lot in that regard. We've done so many of it. I've over, um, over um, 5,000 or 10,000 of, of, of that kind of uh, program. So we have centers all across uh, the state where we uh, have um, teachers, you know, get uh, primary and secondary school teachers, you know, to come and uh, set up centers and then get people within that neighborhood and teach them how to read and write. And uh, sometimes we also equip them with some necessary skills, you know, to, so that that can, you know, help to um, augment uh, the education they're receiving. So it's been quite successful. So um, looking back, so we've done, you know, well in the, with the foundation. Okay. Thank you so very much, sir, for that wonderful um, explanation. A few days ago, you celebrated your 59th birthday. From all of us at League Blast, we say happy birthday, sir. Okay, uh, moving forward, 59 in quotes. Um, it implies that you started your political journey in a very, at a very young age. Can you tell us what motivated you, sir? Well, the... Um I trained as a lawyer and I uh, had my legal practice, though I still have my legal practice. But because um, growing up, I saw a lot of challenges you know, around me, challenges that uh, had to do with infrastructural development of my area, poverty level in the area, and then uh, people who do not um, have voice you know, in the system. So, and I felt that my legal price should be able to address that. But uh, over time, I discovered that the challenges are just too enormous for a, pra a legal practice. You know. So I now decided that um, if I have the opportunity, I'll be able to use those opportunities for our people. So essentially, in 1997, uh, the first major opportunity came after the creation of my local government, which was created in 1996. So there was an election in 1997. So the elders of my local government came together and uh, gave me uh, the offer of running for the office of chairman of the local government so that I could be the first local government chairman of our new local government. So. Um, through uh, God's grace, we got there, we won the election, and then from there, we were able to start addressing those uh, challenges, and then God also supported us to move for, for, forward, so we searched forward. So in 1999, I became the first person to be appointed Chief of Staff in any state government. So when 
uh, Governor Naman uh, came in, so he appointed me chief of staff of his government. And uh, two years later, I became the secretary of government, and then four years later, you know, from 1999, that's 2003, I got into the Senate. And uh, sometimes later, much later, I could find myself in the Coast Parliament, and then so there also many opportunities came. So I utilized those opportunities to begin to do roads, water, electricity, find work for my people, you know, and give them a voice. And um, I'm happy that looking back to that, as uh, you can say, it's been a, a quite wonderful and God has been gracious. So by the grace of God, I'm sure that uh, our story had made the difference in the area we represent. Okay. Um, through your journey, you have given a lot of people um, their voices to speak out. And for that reason, um, Lick Blast got at that the people are urging that you vie for the office of um, the governor of Enugu State come 2023. What do you have to say about that, sir? Well, let me thank those who are asking me to run. I believe it's because of the faith and the confidence they have uh, that can uh, have something to offer and that uh, I could be a good governor. So I thank them. So, but uh, because I believe that whatever happens in physical is controlled by what happens in the spiritual. So I decided to take that, those requests to God for, to bless. So if it's the will of God, I will. So, but if it's not the will of God, I will not. So that's the answer for now. Okay. We, we really do hope that um, God grants uh, you the desire to hack into the voice of the people. Okay. Um, it's no longer news that so many people um, see you or you have become a role model to a lot of people, most especially the youth of Nigeria. What do you have to say to them as regards the um, economic um, um, situation of the country that has pushed a lot of people into um, doing things that are illegal? Well, I sympathize with the young people of Nigeria uh, because um, in the present circumstance they have to survive. Where you finish school, you don't have a job, and then when you have a job, your job is not even uh, guaranteed. You can be laid out, laid, out, laid off any day, and then um, there's no uh, proper environment for you to even uh, stand on your own. You know, you have to provide your own water, provide your own electricity, you know, and then provide your own security if you decide to do something as a private person. So it's a quite a challenging position. So uh, some people uh, cannot cope with those challenges, so, and they have to survive somehow. So that's encouraging a lot of criminality. That makes it easier for uh, those who are engaged in banditry to uh, recruit people easily in any part of Nigeria. You know, so the economic environment has not helped matters. And then the government, the government policies too um, is not in tune with uh, what we've seen uh, in more serious countries. So that, these are the things that are pushing the young people to, on the path of crime. But the, the danger here is that if you take the path of crime, it's likely they're going to end up disastrously. So I think that what we need to do is uh, first on the part of government to provide jobs. Provide jobs not going hard to hire people as uh, executive assistants or hiring them as uh, managers, you know, or officers in government agencies. No, you were able to provide industries as they've done in places like China, you know, Singapore, and many other places. Nigerians, young people can also fit into these areas, and then uh, people will contribute to the GDP of the country. Uh, but I believe that why we're trying to encourage the government to do that. The young people should be able to, to resist any temptation to go to the path of crime because if uh, you do, most likely it's you that will fight. You know, so going to uh, be a kidnapper, uh, drug addict, or drug seller, or any form of uh, banditry, I believe it's not uh, the best way to eat to earn a living. You know, so you may have a, sh a short term, you know, uh, relief in terms of the economic situation. But obviously, if you continue, you're going to end uh, up either in prison or in debt. You know, so we hope that the young people should be able to persevere where we are pushing for government to do the best thing they can for them. And then I do hope that uh, everything ends, everything is just about leadership. We also have the correct leadership at the same time, so everything flow. So I just hope that the young people should also um, be patient with everybody and uh, we're able to find a solution to their problem. And then government need to find a way of cushioning some of the hardship that can lead people to uh, take the part of crime. On our part as legislators, we are beginning to create a legislative environment that can support them you know, to have access to public service 
we did the not too young to run uh, 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 amendment to, elect to the constitution. We're also looking at other options so that they can be engaged, both the uh, young people and the women, you know, actively in government that have access, you know, mm -hmm. in spite of all the issues. You know, so we're pushing for some other legislative reforms that can give them a voice in the governance of this country. Thank you so very much, sir. And uh, on a lighter note, just like the foundation name implies, Ikoha, may God give you the strength to carry the people along and may you live as long as you wish and have all that you desire as long as you wish. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm wishing you success in your endeavors.